During the next 24 to 48 hours, spaceweather.gc.ca is predicting our satellites are going to be influenced by the solar storm that's incoming. The large black dots indicate actual data from the GOES-12 satellite, courtesy of the Space Environmental Center, Border USA. Each colored rectangle indicates the range of the forecast values and is green when below the threshold. However, when it touches or is above the threshold, it turns red, which signals an adverse space weather conditions, hazardous to geosynchronous satellites. When this happens, there's a high likelihood of internal charging of the satellite components by energetic electrons with possible discharges that can result in malfunction or either even complete failure of the satellite. Space weather phenomena have a variety of effects on technology. Energetic particles thrown from the Sun interact with the Earth's magnetic field producing magne magnetic disturbances and increased ionization in the ionosphere. The high energy particles affect satellites causing misoperation or equipment damage that can put the satellite out of operation. Radio waves used for satellite communications or GPS are affected by the increased ionization with disruption of communication or navigation systems. Magnetic disturbances directly affect operations that use the magnetic field, such as magnetic surveys, direct drilling, or compass use. Magnetic disturbances also induce electric currents in long conductors such as power lines and pipelines causing the power system outages or pipeline corrosion. I decided to look around this site a little more and stumbled across something called Charisma. It is the continuation and expansion of the original magnetometer array that is part of the Canopus ground-based instrumentation array. I'd never heard of cannabis either and decided to continue looking and found myself falling right down the rabbit hole and I may have to apologize to Dutch Sense because I think he may be right about the whole art thing. So I thought for a minute that all of these monitoring systems must be getting their data from somewhere. Welcome to the A-Train, people. Let me read you some of the goals of the A-Train, Calypso, and the International Cloud Sat program will be. First of all, and I can't believe this, they want to contribute to the development of new high and mid latitude products and the example they give is snow removal and just wait till you hear what these bad boys are packing there's going to be a part two to this please stay tuned on February 21st 2011 CloudSat began sending intermittent pulsing of LADAR. Not radar, it uses something different. It did this for two weeks and on April 16th it completely shut down. I'll be back with some more news.